Welcome back to the Stony Brook Football Indoor Facility. We're with Coach Chuck Priori. And Coach, it's been a long preseason as we wrap up camp and gear up for New Hampshire on Thursday. How excited are you for you guys to hit the field this fall? Um, you know, it, it, it feels good to have a normal preseason. Obviously, we played some games in the springtime. Um, but it was not a normal preseason. So the preparation part, which I think as football coaches, we're very aware of how much that is needed to be a good team. Um, it's gone well. Um, it was needed. And um, certainly always when you get to a point of preseason, the guys are ready, the coaches are ready to move to the next phase. It's year 16 for you at Stony Brook. Can you believe it? Um, it's interesting. It just means I'm getting a tad older, but, um, you know, 39th year of coaching college football, 16th year at Stony Brook. So, um, it has gone quick. What have you learned along the way? Um, I probably much have more understanding of, um, of how to do the job. Um, I learned from some great coaches that, um, in my earlier years, um, and I've learned from some great coaches throughout the, 16 years here so maybe just to listen better and to um, step back and um, understand now this generation this generation of student athletes is certainly different than when i got involved i started in 1983 was my first year as a graduate assistant so it's different today than it was but um, still rewarding was coaching always a goal of yours after you finished up playing fullback at albany <laughs> uh, it wasn't i i actually got out of College was fortunate enough to get a job in Manhattan. I worked in Manhattan, lived in Manhattan. Um, did that um, for over a year, and I just didn't see that going away. And I honestly just um, called my college coach up, and um, Coach Ford was fortunate enough to um, have something available. It was just by coincidence, and um, went back and started the grad assistantship just because I didn't know. Um, I mean, I was an economics major, ended up being a business education major in my master's, and I've never taught in the classroom, but I do believe what we do is teaching. You're now calling the plays heading into 2021 with this team, and it's something you've done throughout your career. You're an offensive coordinator going back to your days at Penn and uh, at Union Upstate, um, and it's something that you have experience doing here at Stony Brook. What are you excited about calling the offense this year, and what do you like about that side of the ball? First, I've been blessed with my last two coordinators offensively. Um, Jeff Behrman and Carmen Fearless have two great people, um, people I totally trust. Um, I was involved in the offense um, as I'm an offensive guy. Um, I was more focused in on helping with the offensive line and in the in the trenches, which is my background as a coach um, but to be honest with you I think um, there was always something missing for me on Saturdays um, and um, I'm excited about the opportunity to be more involved and um, maybe um, put my personality into what goes on in the field for our kids um, and I've been able to move around I'm not working with the offensive line this year I'm moving around I'm able to be visual visual with the players on offense. I'm also getting over to the defense much more, special teams much more. So I think it's been a good role for me. And, um, you know, we'll see how Saturdays go, but right now it's been exciting. You mentioned your personality. How would you like this offense to look and sort of deliver on that personality on the field? Yeah, you know, we haven't made many changes, um, but with any play caller, there's changes. Um, you know, I think we've, we're, we're going to be a team that, that relies on being physical. Um, and I think we're going to get back to that physicality a little bit with how some things I like to do, which are different than other people maybe. Um, I think we're going to, um, you know, when I, when I speak on my personality, it, it's, it's more that I don't have to trick you. I'm going to go right at you and we're going to go right at you and be okay with that and not have to worry about the other things. And also I'll say this, as a head coach, when you call plays, um, you don't gotta worry about anybody yelling at you. <laughs> yeah, so you. that's right. So I think there'll be probably some different things that we will do that um, will hopefully help us um, continue the success we've had. Put a hat on a hat and play some old school football. At times. 
Yes, <laughs> and we can sugar it up when needed. That's right. How about the other phase of the game? Let's look at your defense. What do you think about that side of the ball? Well, I, you know, I'll, I'll share that I think our offense, our offense will create our defensive mentality. Our defense will create our offensive mentality. Um, you know, we have, um, I think, a very um, good coaching staff on the defense. Um, you know, Rob will be going to his second year coordinating, and last year was a tough year for him. First year as a coordinator, all the lack of in-person meetings, injuries, kids missing practice, an unconditional preseason. So I'm excited for him going into this year because he gets to prepare the real way. Um, so I think that's good. I think same thing with our defensive staff. Um, you know, we, we have some holes to fill. Um, you know, we graduated th three very good players. Um, but I think um, what I've seen so far is pleasing. Um, and I think we have to get back to the get back to the days defensively where we're not tricking you and we're coming at you also. Um, you know, some of the best compliments I've had since we've been in the CAA is when the opposing coaches say, that's the most physical team we've played against. And so I guess to wrap it, wrap those offense and defensive com conversations up is I want us to be the most physical team on Saturdays. And we got to present that with a style of play. When you look at the fundamental aspect, football is a game of blocking and tackling. Where would you evaluate your team in those two categories right now? Yeah, I, you know, I think, um, you know, very astute of you for bringing that up because it's, it's that simple. <laughs> it really is that simple. If you, if you understand your assignments and, and, and you play the game physical, you, you have a chance in every game. Um, I think we're okay. Um, I think we have some guys that, that, that are learning how to do that. Um, but I think it's more mentality than talent-wise. Um, I think we have talent um, at the skill level. But, you know, one of the things we did different this preseason is we have not had one live rep. Um, you ask why. I've done it at times in my career. Um, the depth shot is very important in college football. And certainly more injuries happen when it's live than not live. We've had physical practices, but when you're not bringing somebody to the ground and guys aren't diving into the pile, you protect yourself a little bit. So um, we'll find out on September 2nd, Thursday night, if that idea worked, but um, hopefully we'll be healthier. We have been healthier. This preseason has been healthier than my last couple. So, um, you know, you roll a dice in anything you do. Um, once again, it was a decision that we made as a staff. We've done our homework. We've talked to our sports performance team. We've talked to our athletic trainers. And we came up with a common denominator. Good players on the field on Saturday, able to be healthy and fresh, will win games. How about special teams? You can't overlook that phase of the game. What do you think of your team in the kicking game? It was also a big piece for you last spring with a couple of block punts. Yeah, I, um, I will start off saying, Unfortunately, certainly I was going to ask to be asked about offense and defense and U.S. special teams third, but it probably is the thing that if you win every Saturday, you don't have to win offense and defense. You mentioned the block kicks. They'll win games. Field position. They'll win games. Ability to convert in the red zone with points will win games. Um, you know, I think we'll be able to field our coverage teams correctly. I think we got enough talented athletes. I think the physicality once a game are important. Those coverage teams, when you talk about your punt coverage teams, your kickoff coverage teams, um, something we haven't got a lot of mileage at, which I think we're going to be better at, is our return teams. Um, not because of schemes. I think we have some returners that ha were young. Honestly, this spring, we were counting on them, but they were injured. So guys like Jaden Turner, guys like Sean Harris, um, I think are going to add to our return game and guys that are electrifying in that area that neither one of them did anything this past spring because of injuries, um, along with Saban again, who is, was a staple back there. I'm saying we're okay there. Um, you know, from a, from a punting standpoint, we bring back somebody that's punted in two years in uh, Mitch Wright. Um, and, you know, I think he's done a great job of keeping the ball away from their punt returner. He's a rugby guy. He can kick with his left foot, his right foot. He can pin you. Um, so our yield on our punt team has been tops in the league the last couple of years. You don't have to get off a 
50 yard punt. You need to control the field that way. Um, you know, at kickoffs last year, Angelo um, did a great job. Um, and I think our coverage teams did a good job. We've got to get better at converting points. Um, I think both um, Angelo and uh, Mike Boyle are both capable of doing it. They were both never kicked in a game before. And um, we pretty much are through that now, and I think they both can um, yield points, and I'm counting on it. We'll be looking for it. We also have great long, long snappers, and I don't want to smith that. Um, you know, Carson well. Tebbets is, is, a, is a cut above, and his operational time helps us be successful. Indeed. Coach, your team opens up on Thursday against UNH. Labor Day weekend kickoff, and we're going to have fans in the stadium. What's your message to the Seawolves faithful to come on out and support the fellas? Well, you know, we're getting back to um, college football. And um, it was awesome playing last spring, and it was weird. Um, it was weird. Um, a, we had to have our locker room in the indoor. Um, we warmed up on the other side of the field because of it. Um, we're going to be back at our locker room. We're going to have fans in our alumni tent. We're going to have people in the stands. We're going to have students in the end zone. We're going to have the band at the, at the games. The parts. Yeah, and, and I don't want anybody to miss that. So, you know, if you have a, a thirst and, a, and, and are supportive of your alma mater as alumnus or even our local fan base, um, I think it's going to be a, a great show to get it back off the ground. New Hampshire's a quality opponent every year. They're a potential top 20 team, top 25 team. It'll be no different this year as um, Coach Sean and his team will come down there and represent correctly, and you know we'll be prepared to play. Coach, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. You got it. Thank you.